are listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. And I'm Rachel. It is a special day today, lady. I mean, every day is a special day around here, but <laughs> today is an extra special day. <laughs> because we have a new segment we're rolling out today. We discovered so many women that we want to talk to and didn't have enough segments to talk to all of them. So we just mm. made new segments yeah. Yeah. as an excuse to talk to more people. So, Erin... You're running the show today. What are we doing? Yes. And what is the new thing? It's the a new, new thing today. The new, the new category of conversation with with guests <laughs> is mother daughter. I love it. Yes. What better thing for Lutheran ladies than to discuss mothers and daughters? True. Admit with it. You did this so we could just talk to two women at once. <laughs> you know what? It did really fit well. I did. I have wanted to talk with these two even before I had the idea of how to describe the new segment. We made it after you. Now we can it's keep true. going. We were like, we want to talk to them, but it doesn't yes. fit any of our categories. Exactly. So we'll just make a new one. Uh, so I'm honored. Yes. We are here today talking with Cheryl Magnus and Caitlin Magnus. Cheryl works here in the International Center where Sarah and I work. She's yes. in the building. She's on the second floor, which mm. is below ground for those who are confused. <laughs> Not ground level. That's, That's the, the third, third floor. floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Cheryl works in the communication department for the LCMS, and she is the managing editor of Reporter. Not the reporter. <laughs> no. You. you have to be very clear about this, guys. Yes. This is the sentence official newspaper. It's a big deal. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And Cheryl used to be colleagues with Rachel when Rachel yeah. worked here in the community. Oh, we were next door neighbors. I miss uh, that. Yeah. We actually came on at almost exactly the same time. That's so true. We, we, oh, were wow. new, we were newbies together. Uh -huh. and we learned. Rachel got here maybe a month before I did. So. Yeah. Well, you lasted a lot longer, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for another day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you are still there, and the Lord has taken me on to new and different things. So it's Indeed. beautiful. There we go. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So why don't you guys start by just telling us a little bit about yourselves? Yeah, I think this was probably self-explanatory, but I am... Cheryl's daughter. I don't know if you said that. <laughs> yes, I don't. That's I didn't important. Find which one was the mother and daughter? You're right. I didn't. And so. we should probably also mention that Caitlin, you are all grown up. You are. Yes, not I am. Yes. You're an adult. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. No, she isn't. She's still a very tiny little girl. <laughs> and she has not grown up yet. Uh, I'm in denial. Do you want me to talk in the, like this? <laughs> So yeah, tell us a little bit about yourselves. What do you do? I don't know. Tell us about how... How did you meet? Yeah. <laughs> it was 28 years ago. So um, she kept me up all night long, yeah. I will say. October yeah, that, that's true. We 1995, there. yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is truly the beginning. Yeah, that's um, truly the beginning. The beginning of, of me. No, so yeah. So, so I'm the mom and Caitlin was overdue. She did not want to come out. So mm. we had I was the second one. Yeah, I have she was number two. Brother. So we had to go to the hospital and coax her along a little bit. And then she kept me up all night long and she made her appearance bright and early at like 6 a.m. in the morning after keeping me up all night long. And she's still kind of a night owl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I still stay up all night long and I don't want to come out when I'm supposed to come out. <laughs> <laughs> but to go back to Aaron's question. So, yes, I'm managing editor of Reporter and which is how I got to know Rachel before she left. And I cried and I literally did cry. Oh, yeah, I think we both did. I really did. <laughs> when I'm not, so I've only been here, I've been here about seven years. And before coming to the IC, I was freelance writer, freelance musician, homeschool mom, stay at home mom for many years. And then back, way back in a previous life, I taught school, taught English. So have three children. Caitlin's the middle. My oldest is Trevor, and he has a wife and a baby, so now I'm a grandma. Aww. And Caitlin's number two, and then I have a third child, a boy. He's not a child anymore. He's a <laughs> sophomore at Concordia University. A man. Chicago. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Caitlin. I already said I have a, a few things going on right now. I'm a writer, 
sort of the freelance editor. I work in food service. Right now I'm working at Andy's Frozen Custard, which those of you audience who are in St. Louis or a few other places in the Midwest might have heard of, of Andy's. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it was my favorite place before we moved away from one. We could walk to an Andy's and it was mm. the best. Nice. Hot take. I like it better than Ted Drew's. Don't Ooh. cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are strong words. Yeah, I know. I know. Wow. That's the correct. Those are the correct words. Right on us in the present company. Yes. And I'm a. I'm in school at yeah. the University of Missouri, Columbia. It's an online program, so I live here in St. Louis. But I'm studying library science, working on masters in library science and information science. Nice. Okay. Okay. So I honestly feel like I know the two of you the most from interacting with you on social media, which is not (laughs) how I do most of my interactions with (laughs) things. So it's a little weird. And I'm glad I have a chance to actually, you know, interact with you in real life here today. Me too. But (laughs) the reason I was like, ooh, I especially want to talk with you is because I just really admire (laughs) the way you interact as still as like with that parent child dynamic there is that but also as adults (laughs) and on social media (laughs) it's like the trifecta of (laughs) and they're both writers too yeah you're really good at communicating (laughs) yeah so I'm curious I have not known you like as you made that shift into adult, adult relating, as opposed to adult child relating. So how was that? Was that an easy shift for you guys to navigate? Was that something that you sort of had to figure out? I don't know. Tell me a little bit about that. So you're talking not necessarily about social media not right necessarily. now. Okay. But just um, about that's where can... I've observed it okay. myself, but yeah. I <laughs> feel like it's probably more reflective. Well, Maybe you'll tell me, well, it turns out our social media relationship is the healthiest aspect of our relationship. <laughs> Maybe that's the first <laughs> question. <laughs> the first question is, <laughs> is real life the same as social media? <laughs> Aaron, um, <laughs> that will direct the rest of our conversation today. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, I haven't, I don't think I've been on social media as much the last couple of years as I might have previously been. So Mm -hmm. I was curious if you had any examples of interactions Mm -hmm. that you have observed. Yeah. Okay. So good question. Let's see. So I cannot tell you, I should have, I should have anticipated this and come prepared (laughs) with. It's okay. On November 17th. (laughs) But it's like this exchange. (laughs) It's Facebook. So it just kind of gets lost in the. Yes, it does. So what what I sort of, the examples that I can think of are often ones where one or the other of you, or even like your husband, father, Phil, uh, <laughs> husband and the, anyway, you guys know what I mean. Husband, so, husband of one, uh, father of yes. several. Um, three. The, the man of the household where one of the three of you will have posted maybe a story that you read about, about, say, a current event and have an opinion on it. Mm-hmm. And then there's some dialogue and one actual dialogue Mm -hmm. sort of unusual Mm -hmm. and it's not just you're exactly right we see completely eye to eye but Mm -hmm. rather responding to it and being like but here I have a different take on this Mm -hmm. and then there's conversation goes back and forth along those lines Mm -hmm. that does not that I have observed <laughs> devolve into tears <laughs> or <laughs> we that that at the layer, <laughs> you know, deleted and <laughs> so that that type of interaction is one that I have often seen. I can't give a specific one mm-hmm. right this moment, but That's I've okay. often seen it where you're like, here's my thoughts on this thing and like, I have a different take. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, well, I hadn't considered it that way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The first thing I would say is that like I said, I don't post about current events or issues so much probably the last couple of years. So what you have observed, I would agree with that when I have posted about that kind of thing, it has followed 
that healthy pattern of conversation between family members. Although these days I still prefer to talk about that sort of thing in person mm-hmm. rather than online. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's not primarily about the family members because they're the, you know, the healthiest conversations are with the people you you know and love and not with strangers. Sure. It's the ones That's with wisdom. Strangers that <laughs> tend to be a little more upsetting. But but still, even with with the loved ones, I find it's normally better to talk about more important stuff in person. Mm-hmm. So yeah. just in general, I don't post about that sort of thing so much online these days. Mm-hmm. I think what I see most is that you post funny memes and your mom laughs at them. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yes, that's I witness that a lot, which is its own kind of love and support. If you're yeah. going to post a hilarious meme, somebody ought to laugh at it. Exactly. <laughs> So we had a plan before we, shall we tell them our plan before Ooh, we came in to record? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> you, you came up with the plan, so why don't you lay it out? Okay, I will, yes, I will explain the plan. So, <laughs> oh, boy. Because <laughs> we're, we were, we're both a little nervous. We're, we're both, both a little out of our comfort zone. <laughs> we're both a little nervous, nervous yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was saying to my mom, she's been on the radio before. I have not. So I was saying to her, if I don't know how to answer a question, I will stall and deflect with jokes. And she <laughs> and give her time to sweep in with a thoughtful, insightful answer. Yes. <laughs> and then she said, okay, but she, my mom can't answer a question. She needs me to sweep in with the jokes. I said I would I would deliver an incomprehensible word salad. Yes. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> yes. the and then Caitlin would swoop in and yes. save me with a joke. Uh-huh. Mm. But I said sweep in. And then I th- and then I was like, wait, I don't think that's the right term. I was thinking swoop in, mm. but then but then I, but then mom was like, well, I know how to sweep in because mm-hmm. I sweep all the time. As, as, as mom. <laughs> Come on, I sweep. Yeah. So so the plan the plan ended up being you you sweep and I swoop. <laughs> all right, sweeping and swooping, and so far you don't need it. You're doing great, by the way, Kayla. This, this is fun. <laughs> I am curious, though, because I have full disclosure, I sit next to both of you guys in church choir. So like I have a little bit more in-person interaction with yes. you guys and Phil and the rest of the family, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But I have also paid attention to the kind of discourse, Aaron, that you're talking about. And the I laugh at your jokes, memes on Facebook, yeah. too. Caitlin, mm-hmm. I appreciate your humor. Uh, <laughs> but I am Thank curious. <laughs> I'm curious if that kind of, I mean, you're talking about these conversations being better in person. So how did you guys build that culture of healthy conversation as a family? Because that isn't Mm -hmm. necessarily a given in family units that you have healthy conversation in person. Did you grow up with that? Yeah. Like what kind of, how did you, you I know we're totally going off script here, but Mm -hmm. how did you build this culture of healthy communication that, I mean, it is visible to us Mm -hmm. just viewing from the outside. Yeah. I've I've talked a lot. Do you want to go? I'll try. Okay. You can swoop in with a joke in a minute. <laughs> well, yeah, I think probably what you see on Facebook is to a large extent just how we talk a lot. <laughs> we do talk a lot. This does yeah. not mm-hmm. surprise me. <laughs> we talk a lot. I mean, sometimes our poor kids are, you know, like, so we have, a, we've, all these years, we've had a rule with the kids growing up at supper time. So mm. we pray at the beginning of the meal and we pray at the end of the meal. We pray at both ends, okay? And the kids were not allowed to get up and leave the table until we had the closing prayer. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, and so, you know, sometimes conversations would get going and going and going. And finally, the kids are like, can we pray now? <laughs> 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 just like so ready to be done. I, I hasten to add, I mean, you know, so Caitlin lives at home. She's 28 years old, and yet this is like so ingrained. She still does this. So when we, (laughs) on the occasions that we get to, you know, we're all running and going every which way these days. But when we have that opportunity to sit down, Mm. you know, her and me and my husband and Evan, if he's home from college and have a meal, we just really cherish that. And she does not get up until we've had that ritual Mm -hmm. of we pray. And it just, I mean, I think that's part of what's, what I appreciate so much about my daughter is that that respect is still there. And I, and, you know, it would just feel just, weird yeah. to do that. You know? <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> so even though she's a grown lady and she's living her own life, you know, she just still has such respect for us as her parents. And I think that's a big part of 
how, you know, for me, what helps us to navigate this changing relationship mm-hmm. over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not as if you turn 18 and suddenly you're this new category of person, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That might be how it works in the in the eyes of the law, but that's just how it has to be because there has to be a cutoff point, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in, in real life, it's like you become an adult by inches. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it even, it starts before 18. You start becoming an, an adult when you're adolescent. Mm-hmm. And then I, I guess what I'm saying is because like the whole thing with with the closing prayer is that, there was never a point where I was like, where there was a decision that I could make that's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to stop doing this now because mm-hmm. I am an adult. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's a gradual thing. And when you have those things that stay consistent, that's that's a gift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that brings me into my next question, because I know that. Well, when I when I was hanging out with you guys regularly, Caitlin, you were still a fairly recent undergrad graduate. Mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And you had a little brother who was, you know, starting high school and life was very different for you then. But I I know now things are have changed and yet you still have these wonderful family traditions. Could you describe for us? Because I feel like it's a pretty special thing. What is a typical evening or a day off like in the Magnus household? Because it's, you know, obviously you aren't always home. Phil, Cantor Phil Magnus travels a lot for his mission work. But when he is home, maybe when Evan's home from Concordia, what's life like for you? What do you guys do for fun? We don't always have the same days off. Mm -hmm. Mm. My schedule is pretty inconsistent. Mm. But let's say in this, you know, in this scenario, it's a day where all of us have time at home. I guess with the exception of Trevor, because Trevor's, you know, he's has, got his own life. He's now. got his. He, he, has, he has a house. He's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is a very distinctive factor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Houses so, take a lot of work. <laughs> let's say, yeah, I mean, and a and a child. How yeah. so? A wife and a kid. Yeah. yeah. So let's say Evan's home, right? I'm home. Dad's home for the night. You're home. Mm-hmm. What, what are we doing? Please tell me there's a hymn sing happening. <laughs> there might be some on yeah. occasion. Yeah. On occasion. If we're all home, you know, we'll try to have a good, a nice meal to d- together. You know, I might cook or dad might cook. We might be sitting out on the patio if it's nice weather, maybe having a cocktail. Mm. And our kids are both old enough that they can you know, sort of sit down with us sometimes. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> that is a new world. I can't even imagine that world at this point. <laughs> Yeah, we we might, you know, often might have a music rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something yeah. to practice for church or yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen, you know, listen to somebody play the piano. And then sometimes we'll, you know, pull up a movie, try to decide on a movie to watch together and Yeah, and or something. or a game. Yeah. Or a game. Play mm-hmm. game. Yeah, play game, watch a movie, mm-hmm. take the dog for a walk. Mm-hmm. It's pretty pretty boring stuff, you know. Sounds but. great. <laughs> actually Mm -hmm. so yeah (laughs) and then as previously said we tend to talk a lot yeah and then we just talk yeah which is Mm -hmm. it just it strikes me as funny because all of you guys are introverts aren't you we yeah. all are. But we the thing are. about introverts is you put the right two introverts in the room, they will never stop talking. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> People don't believe me when I say that too. So true. Mm. Yep. Well, and I love the way you describe that because it sounds like just family life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. family life doesn't stop being family life because you're all over 21. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. you have to mix up more cocktails, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's all it is, really. <laughs> we can end the episode here. Yeah. <laughs> we it. The well, key to wonder- family life, more cocktails. <laughs> the wonderful thing is we have this built-in bartender, which is dad. Yeah. And he just oh. stands over at the bar and takes our orders. Oh, it's like, oh, oh my goodness. Huh? Like tonight, Caitlin. What would you like tonight, honey? So, yeah, nice. it's great. <laughs> oh, a secret I had not known before. Okay. That, that is beautiful. <laughs> It does help with these moments. It helps them to happen organically that I do still live at home. And Evan's at college right now, but he's home for breaks and summer. Whenever the time comes that that we move out, I hope we still make some time to do that sort of thing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, Caitlin, so you're still living at home 
doesn't sound like you're like, yeah, I can't wait to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a deadline. I'm uh, 17 more days and I'm gone. Uh, so is, is this something that, that you would recommend or do you have advice for young adults who are living at home with their parents? Yeah. And this is so timely because mm-hmm. every time new research comes out, we hear that more and more 20 somethings are in this sort of situation of because of various economic and just emotional factors that they're choosing to live at home for longer. Give us your wisdom because obviously you make it work really well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I had the exact statistic. I think it's something like half American young adults in their 20s now live at home. And yeah, I mean, it's not. I hesitate to use like the word recommend because everyone has a different situation. Mm -hmm. So maybe living at home could be the very wrong choice for someone if they have a family that is not good to them or, you know, if they if they had to move out for their career or or for their relationship or all manner of things. So Mm -hmm. it's not a thing that like I'm going to say that I recommend as like the thing you should do, but if you're in that situation where you can live at home and you have a good relationship with your family, it can be very helpful financially, especially because a lot of younger millennials and Gen Z are really struggling financially right now. And I don't think it should be something that anyone is embarrassed of. There's some still some of that cultural shame around living at home mm-hmm. that stems from the whole, you know, you got to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps yeah. and find your own <laughs> way in the world. And I don't want to you know, dismiss that spirit entirely, but I just don't think people should be ashamed of it. And no, there's yeah. this whole term failure to launch mm-hmm. that's that's used for Gen Z and younger millennials that like refers to, you know, it's what it says, failure to move out, get married, get a get a steady career. And that's, you know, that's a worthwhile thing to discuss and to figure out why this is happening. But there is also data to indicate that millennials are launching they're just taking lo- a bit longer to do it mm. so mm-hmm. i would advise people who are living at home to not worry too much that they're you know failing to launch completely yeah yeah when i after i graduated from college i as you do <laughs> i had an idea <laughs> as, as one does yeah <laughs> i was going to move or not, i moved you know, to a a city that i really had no connections with. I did have an aunt and uncle who lived there, but nothing else. I don't know. I had this <laughs> this idea. So I was like, I'm going to do it. It was it was a rough year and <laughs> a really rough year. It was expensive year and mm. hard, painful. It was a learning year, a, a very strong learning year. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of it, I moved home <laughs> I with my parents. And at the time, I did feel some of that, what you were describing with just that, that stigma. And it wasn't really from, as near as I can tell, it wasn't even because of what somebody else, I wasn't getting it from the outside. It was me that was feeling mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And I had to come to my own terms of, and I could, even while I was feeling that, recognize that this is also a really, it's a it's a really good thing. And it was a wonderful experience for me to be able to have that time back with my parents as an adult mm-hmm. to sort of reset that. Yeah. And then after a year doing that, then I then I went to Japan. But having that year with them in particular was also awesome to do that right before then. Yeah. yeah and I think as a young adult, you do need to have those those tough learning experiences. So Mm -hmm. after what I said last, I wanted to also add that even as you're living at home, you know, you don't want to be the stereotype of the kid who just lives in their parents' basement and isn't, and isn't working or looking for employment or, or, you know, socializing or trying to do anything with their own life Mm -hmm. because that's, you know, and it's not just about not taking advantage of your parents because your parents are, are, you know, they're going to be there for you regardless, but like, it's also for your, for your own self. You don't want to mm-hmm. be, be stuck in that rut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. There is value to separation and adulthood and all of those mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. things, but that can come at different times for different mm-hmm. people, which is totally fine. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, I moved out when I was 18 to go to college. Both my brothers, they stayed at home for college. So it's a very mm-hmm. different experience mm-hmm. for me, but I can see the value of being able to, 
know your parents in a different way as an adult and having that time to spend together because I mean, I moved out. I never moved back in with them and I've lived far enough away from them that it's been, I mean, it's taken me years to finally <laughs> understand that like the relationship is just different. And in order mm-hmm. for me to to know them as adults and for them to know me as an adult, like you have mm-hmm. to put a lot, maybe not a lot of extra effort, but it's a different kind of effort when you don't actually live close enough yeah. to know them in yeah. person. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there there are real benefits to, to knowing your parents, knowing your kids as adults and having that close bond of a relationship. So, yeah, yeah I was going to piggyback on what Caitlin said a few minutes ago, just talking about the the stigma that is sometimes attached to living with your parents as as an adult child. That sounds weird. Adult <laughs> child. I don't know. How <laughs> I stumbled I over it throughout this <laughs> up to the whole episode. Well, that's evidence. <laughs> the fact that our language doesn't quite isn't quite able to wrap itself around this concept yeah. shows yeah. exactly yeah. that there is some mild stigma there. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think if you look back through history, mm-hmm. you know, this whole idea of just getting young people out of the house and off on their own and don't ever come back again. I mean, you know, it seems like this is maybe more of a recent yeah. thing. You yeah. know, I think, you know, the extended family kind of all living together and sticking together. And, you know, maybe if, even if they were just, you know, the farm, you know, maybe mm-hmm. got a farm just down the road or whatever, yeah. but still being close together, you know, has historically been a model as well. And so this mm-hmm. kind of feels to me a little bit like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, I think that we've been a blessing to Caitlin and the place that she is in her life right now. But I mean, she's been such a blessing to us just mm-hmm. having her at home the last few years. So, you know, we had a, a horrible deep freeze ice thing yeah. in in January in St. Louis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My husband was in Africa Yep, for the entire month of January. And my son is at college, you mm-hmm. know, but I had a buddy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we went through it together uh-huh. and our, you yeah. know, HVAC quit working and, you know, yep, all kinds yeah. of things. As um, it does in January it does. when it's below zero. <laughs> this is just what happens. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. That was a fun time. Uh, that was a fun mm-hmm. time. Yeah. So yeah. we had heat out at the same time you together. Did too, that's right. We were yeah. commiserating on yeah. social. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is such a gift when you're able to choose to live together and offer each other mutual support and encouragement. I actually, I know this conversation well, not a lot of people know this, but for three years in our early 30s, my husband and I and our then three and then four children lived with my parents. And it wasn't as people suspected because we were broke. It was because we chose to and they chose to have us. And even though we, you know, eventually broke up housekeeping, all of us look back on that time and are very glad that we had it together. Mm -hmm. But there is always that that look that you get when you explain we live with our parents. No, it's not short term. No, it's we're not bankrupt. We have jobs. <laughs> mm-hmm. We pay rent. Personally, I am broke, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were close to broke, but, you know, not quite there all the way. But, you know, it's like for whatever reason that there is there's usually more than one reason at play. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not I have failed as an adult. Mm -hmm. It's I have chosen this together with my parents as the most as the richest and best possible living arrangement for myself at this season Mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if it is a a financial necessity or the best financial option, it helps, you know, if you also like each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) That can be the reason that can be just we like each other. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, you mentioned Japan. We'll have to talk about Japan later. I, I, I want to go so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the, in the meantime, I, I have a follow-up question. That was just a personal anecdote. <laughs> and that is, in what ways do you, besides being buddies when the age fat goes out in a nice storm, how do you encourage and support one another on a daily basis? <laughs> you want me so, to go so, so, sorry, I, w- I was thinking about about Japan because. Um... <laughs> oh, go for it! Go for it! Follow that rabbit trail, girl. We'll, get there. we'll come back to this yeah. because. The, <laughs> sorry, the, the the social stigma about living with your parents it's also a very Western American thing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. One thing that I've not read about Japan is that there's almost the opposite stigma where mm. parents 
if you have a child who is like out there on their own, struggling financially or, you know, who or is even like homeless or anything like that, that's a black mark on you mm. as mm. parents. So that has almost the opposite effect of there are young adults who are then sort of enabled to take advantage of their parents. But yeah, that's that's all I was I, I was thinking mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a good point. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think going to Rachel's question about how do we support each other, I, I'm just going to give the same answer I already gave, which is we talk. We just, mm. I mean, we text. We do a lot of texting during the day. I mentioned earlier, I mean, Caitlin, 28 years old, and yet just the respect and the and the consideration that she shows for me. So, you know, she's working two jobs, going to college, running all around, all different hours, We'll sometimes have late shifts at Andy's and that sort of thing. And yet she knows that I'm a worry wart <laughs> and that I don't sleep well if I am worried about her. You know, so she will just text me a little thing, you know, like leaving work now, you know. Mm. Yeah. And she, you know, she doesn't have to do that. And if she were living on her own, I wouldn't expect her to do that, you know. <laughs> but because she's living with us, mm-hmm. I'm going to expect to hear a door, the garage door open, whatever. Yep. and If I don't hear that by a certain time, I'm going to worry, you know, so she's Mm -hmm. just really good about sort of, you know, sending me little notes and, you know. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, if I forget, it's not like you get really mad at me or anything. (laughs) Like I've known, I've known people who didn't have good relationships with their parents. And I knew someone who her mom would text her. And then if she didn't respond within a given time frame, then her mom would get mad. Mm -hmm. Um, And that would not work for me. That is the unhealthy version of Right. And it was like yeah. this friend of mine, you know, sometimes she would be like, you know, she would be in class or she would be, you know, doing something else. And like, mm-hmm. sorry, mom, I couldn't answer your text just mm-hmm. then, you know. So, yeah, the, the flip side of that is just that's a flip side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, like talking and texting and stuff, that mm-hmm. isn't a small thing. Like, no, it seems it's like a lot maybe, of work. Yeah. Like that. There's a lot of intentionality and a lot of relationship building that Mm -hmm. happens when you're willing to have conversations with people and you make the effort Mm -hmm. to send those text messages and to respond to them. Speaking of which, I need to text my mom back. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But having that intentionality of talking, it sounds on the surface like a simple thing of like, oh yeah, we just, you know, we Mm -hmm. we talk, but Mm -hmm. that's a big deal Mm -hmm. for a parent and an adult adult child (laughs) to have have those kind of, that kind of relationship and to have those conversations and put that intentionality into a relationship so that you are able to trust each other and to have the the mutual consolation or whatever whatever term we're using mm-hmm. between each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I was, I remember where I, where I was going now. <laughs> it is, you know, it is an intentional effort to maintain that sort of conversation. But at the same time, like, it's not, it's not hard for me to send you a, a text when I leave work. Mm-hmm. And also because you're not going to get mad at me if I forget one mm-hmm. night, I don't like have the sort of rebellious instinct to be like, well, I don't, I don't have to send you a text every night, so I'm not going to. (laughs) It's it's, it's something that that helps you feel better and it takes me two seconds. So it's like, why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that sort of interaction is just more reflective, I think, of human beings being considerate of each other, whether they're mother, daughter, or friends or, Mm -hmm. you know, something else. Yeah. Um, Like I said, it helps if you like each other. It also mm -hmm. helps if you're, if both people are just decent to each other (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) because it's like you can have all the advice about like communication healthy relationships in the world but if one if one person in the relationship is not you know does not respect or treat the other person with kindness it's just it's never going to work Mm -hmm. and isn't it amazing how sometimes you can have the nicest most polite person in the world and then they get home and they have trouble being that for their family Mm -hmm. yeah that just because you know how to be courteous doesn't mean it's easy Mm -hmm. in those close familial situations where nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but what you're describing actually just sounds like Christian community, Mm -hmm. which is great to see that sort of playing out 
in the Magnus home. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a secret, you know, it, it's not a secret cheat code for mm, just because it's a family shame. relationship. It doesn't be nice if there was. Yeah. Fun, fun, <laughs> fundamentally, it's no different than any other human relationship. Well, and yeah. I think I will also jump in and say that a big, big part of what makes this work out, I think, is that we have this common foundation of faith. Mm-hmm. You know, so... I mean, we go to, we sing in church choir together. We go to church every week together. And, you know, when you have that as your foundation, there's just all kinds of things you can navigate around. So if we Mm -hmm. have disagreements, you know, about a current event or Mm -hmm. about just a life thing, you know, we agree on the big important things, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And there's always going to be that that love and respect Mm -hmm. beneath it too. Like that's one reason I don't post on social media about current events or controversial issues so much now. I prefer to talk in person. Like I was saying at at the beginning is because even with your family and loved ones online, it can be really easy, at least for me, to read tone into things Mm -hmm. that's not there. (laughs) Especially because sometimes I do, you know, fight with strangers online. It's like I... I, (laughs) I sort of learn to, <laughs> learn to expect the hostility, mm. even mm-hmm. even from people who are are not hostile. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So talking in person just it removes that entirely. Like mm-hmm. talking in person, it's like, well, if someone starts getting upset, it's like, okay, let's stop and yeah, mm-hmm. talk about you're, this. You're yeah. much less likely to come into a conversation with your like guard up already. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's um, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. ready yeah. for a fight. Because you see this, you know, this human being that that you love right in front of you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even strangers. It's true. So like I go to periodically, I'll go to a a meetup that is intended to discuss topics and hear from actual human beings, different takes on a current topic. That sounds Mm -hmm. fun. Instead (laughs) of reading the comment section on the topic. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and even though they're people that I don't know yet, it is. It's much harder to it's much harder to take offense and it's much harder to want to cause offense <laughs> or, you know, you're more reluctant to cause offense because you can see the impact that your words are having. Like you could just see it on their faces. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, OK, I got to tone it down. Tone it down. <laughs> That's a little so wait, make your face more a little, little smileier. <laughs> That's just because you're thinking hard. (laughs) But you can read these cues on people when you're seeing them face to face, Mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. So you guys are both writers. Mm -hmm. Do you? Which is strange to me. Really? (laughs) Really? Why is it strange? Because my mom's a nurse. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't usually run in families or if it does it skips a generation the idea that Cheryl you got a child as a writer just like you are that's like uh-huh. some sort of minor miracle we're <laughs> different kinds of writers we're different oh. kinds of writers oh, yes. okay yeah tell us about that okay. well okay so let me tell you a story about Caitlin okay, oh, okay. Caitlin was, she'll tell us a story about you yeah This'll Caitlin be was <laughs> destined <laughs> Caitlin was destined to be a writer and she's heard uh-huh. me say this like you know I don't know time and time again over the years, but we have home video of Caitlin sitting in her high chair and we would say, and I have multiple clips like this, Caitlin, tell us a story. And, you know, she can't talk yet, but she, you know, she's like, you know, it was like, you know, she's telling us a story when she's a little, you know, she was always story girl. Okay. You know, and even would write from a very young age. You know, I still have oh. stories that you and Trevor wrote together. Oh, oh my goodness! goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but she writes. She writes like fiction stories, okay. and I just I can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I tried to do that a little when I was a kid, but I stand in awe of people that can make up stories and plots and characters and that sort of thing. So that's Aww. what. Yeah. Well, I. I couldn't be the managing editor of, of, of <laughs> reporter, not, not the reporter. Yeah. No, it goes both ways. <laughs> My job is safe. <laughs> so do you guys give each other, I don't know, do you read each other's work and give each other professional feedback yeah. or do you limit it to, I don't know, not the critiquing sort of thing, but just like, <laughs> this is great. Keep going. So Caitlin has shared her manuscripts, her novel mm-hmm. manuscripts with me and you know, given me the high honor of being, you know, an early editor feedback person on those. Because she's good and she does it for uh, free for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't really have the opportunity so much to, you know, because what I do is just so fast paced. And, you know, yeah. we have, as Rachel knows, we have many editors in yeah. the office. And, you know, so we're quickly writing stuff, passing stuff around, you know. But if I ever, if I ever do write a piece of fiction, you know, a story mm-hmm. or a novel, she would be the first person that mm-hmm. I would get to. Oh, yeah. It, so. I think it does help, though, that we write different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because that, I don't, I don't expect you to, you know, critique a manuscript like a professional fiction editor would. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's. I mean, it really is enough for me just for you to read it and yeah. be like, oh, I saw a typo on this page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do all day, right? Or, <laughs> right, yeah. it's, it's just, mm-hmm. or just from a pure readerly perspective. Reader, to be like, mm-hmm. I yeah. was confused when this character said this. Just super helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other way, like when I read your articles for the Federalist or, or Reporter, that sort of thing, it's I'm not like giving them a real in-depth critique. It's mm-hmm. sure it's more. I like this. I thought maybe I, I wanted more explanation about this. Mm-hmm. You you misspelled carrot and <laughs> yeah. no, I five. didn't. <laughs> that was not my fault. Like, <laughs> <"This is laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do you ever have conversations like when I have with my kids and they'll they'll show me a piece of writing and I'll say, OK, as an editor, do you want feedback or <laughs> affirmation? Because I could be one or the other. <laughs> Those would be two different things. Yeah, I, I like to go with the compliment sandwich. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. Affirmation, then feedback, then affirmation. Yeah, got mm-hmm. it. That's very yeah. good of you. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that works. That works well. It's a lot of work. You like but... to eat those too, don't you? Yeah, tasty. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. good to make for others. Good to everyone likes a delicious sandwich. and nutritious. <laughs> yes. Now I'm wondering what foods would make up a compliment sandwich. <laughs> hmm. You probably can't eat any of them, so don't think too hard about it. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> no, I think I don't. I think we may have mentioned earlier that we're homeschoolers, so mm. well, that's true. you know, so that's Caitlin true. grew up. That. Caitlin grew up having me read and give her feedback on stuff although we were we would be in the category of what is known as a relaxed homeschooling family (laughs) so we just you know kind of did a lot of living and reading and talking and some book stuff but the book stuff was more for math like you have to do your math you know and then the writing and the reading and all of that just kind of you just soaked it in so I don't I guess I gave you some paper assignments along the way yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so relaxed homeschooling yeah. I aspire to that <laughs> I don't remember like I don't remember learning to write right yeah or learning to read mm-hmm. it was just kind of like learning to speak happened. to yeah. speak a language it yeah. just mm-hmm. happened and even like because like you mentioned I would make up stories and I want to write them down mm-hmm. so you you let me sort of bang on the keyboard on, on Microsoft Word on your big chunky Windows 98 <laughs> 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 um, and but but yeah to this day I type a little weird it's yeah. like I, I type just as fast as, as anyone but yeah I don't type entirely correctly because or, she t- she started typing way before she was supposed to right yeah. <laughs> yeah. so she just figured out her own system uh-huh. yeah and it's like once you have your system yep you know I'm not going to try to change it system. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How weird is that to have gone in just a few short years from being homeschool mom, homeschool daughter, hanging out, typing stories, reading books, having conversations to now? Does it feel like you're both grown up comparatively? I, I speak as someone right now who spends most of my time living that homeschool life and mm-hmm. loving it, but realizing, OK, this lifestyle is very different than, say, managing editor of reporter or, you know, excellent frozen custard slinger slash graduate student. <laughs> mm-hmm. How does that, has that transition worked? I don't. Asking I for both, a friend. Sure. <laughs> I feel both grown up and not grown up. I think it's you know, the universal experience of being in, being in your yeah. 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, and your 30s. 40s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it and just keeps so going. It doesn't go away. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Am I an adult? I'm not sure. <laughs> so... Yeah. Am I an adult? I mean, we also had a period of time in Caitlin's childhood growing up where my mom lived with us. So grandma, I think, moved in with us, gosh, probably when you were about five years old, maybe. There was a short period of time where she moved out again for a little while, but then she Mm -hmm. came back. So, I mean, pretty much from the time you probably remember her as a, just a steady presence in your life. She lived on her own for a few years, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, 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 for a few years in yeah. there. 
But anyway, she lived with us for a long time. And, you know, so we had this, I had this interesting experience of not only being mother, mm. but of being daughter. Oh. So talk about a sandwich. Yep. You know? yes. um, Bring back the sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> it was a different kind of sandwich. I think, you know, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. It's just not, I think, you know, ever easy to probably live with your mother. But I think there were, you know, other challenges that I won't go into for our purposes here that made it a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. So where was I going with this? So Mm -hmm. I think perhaps, you know, having that experience of living with my mom and knowing as an, as a grown up woman with children, how difficult that was to sort of always be living, you know, under the watchful eye of mom. (laughs) Yes. Uh, I wrote it. I influenced you. I wrote an article about this at one one time, and I shared the anecdote of just kind of losing it one day with her because it was just such a stupid little thing. You know, I'm just like heading out, and she's like, "Do you have your coat?" I'm like, "Mom, (laughs) I'm like, you know, 40 years old. You know, you don't have to remind me. You know, if I want to go out without a coat, I'll go out without a coat. You know, that's just you know." kind of straw that broke the camel's back on that day, because, you know, <laughs> but I think being in that situation, and Caitlin, by the way, saw some of the worst of me during those years. <laughs> <laughs> it still loves me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course. But I, maybe, you know, having that experience maybe has made me just to, a little bit more cognizant of that challenge mm. of being an adult living with your mother. And so I, I try really, really hard and I don't always succeed, but I try really hard you know, not to be in her business, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. (laughs) Did you or did you not bring a coat here today, Caitlin? (laughs) It's like 50 degrees. It's pretty warm here today. Okay, it's It's snowy in Connecticut. Never mind. (laughs) Question (laughs) retracted. I feel like, I don't know, my instinct is that it would be the person who has the harder job is the mother who needs to shift Mm. in her mindset, in how she is reacting. Because I feel like yeah. we're just sort of like program. Like we're we're going to grow up. We're going to grow up. Mm-hmm. And like that's sort of built into. Yeah. <laughs> just to, you're, you want to, as the child, start doing that. But I feel like the reverse, therefore, is the more challenging shift. Yeah. It's the harder one to actually accomplish it successfully, gracefully, I don't know, without, yeah. without tears. <laughs> it's definitely a much bigger, bigger shift, you know, because yeah. I remember when Kate, you know, I remember when Caitlin was a baby, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. and all of the different phases of life that she's gone through. Mm-hmm. But, you know, she's only known me as a grown up. Right. right. You know, and now right. I'm a grown up with a few more gray hairs and a few more wrinkles, you know, but essentially the same person. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Although your maybe your life isn't changing as much as mine. Mm hmm. So the relationship is changing more on your end, but mm-hmm. just as far as how much life is, is changing, is that's true. changing more for me. That's an excellent point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 The changes are different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Depending upon the person. But it's sort of, it's, it sort of balances out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But with grandma, I think some of the stress for you is not just living with your mom. Mm-hmm. It was having to be both the daughter and the mom at the same time. Cause it's always hard when you don't have like a defined role in, in your own house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause you were, a mom to some of us and then a daughter to, to her. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all, also that wife thing too. So yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's sort of, that sort of goes hand in hand with being a mom. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With, w- when you're a child, an, an adult child, <laughs> <laughs> there's something about that, that grates against being a parent because as a parent, you are responsible, mm-hmm. but as a child, there's someone else who wants to be responsible for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I miss that. But I don't have kids, so I think um, I don't feel that as much. I'm just, I can just be a person <laughs> yeah. who happens to be your child and mm-hmm. doesn't, yeah, I don't feel like, I don't feel that tension mm-hmm. so much. Mm-hmm. Well, and this is, I mean, every generation deals with this of parents that get older and kids mm-hmm. get older. And then we all have to figure out that new relationship of like, my parents are still my parents, mm-hmm. but I'm an mm-hmm. adult. <laughs> How do we do it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but am I an adult? Really? But am I an adult? <laughs> this is actually the question. <laughs> I, have I, I call it the adult. generational ka-chunk. <laughs> You're just going along and then all of a sudden you realize ka-chunk. 
Uh-huh. I'm in a different spot in this generation. Uh-huh. I'm yeah. sure for for both of you, there was a bit of a kachunk when that sweet little grandbaby slash nephew was born. Yeah, that there's this realization of oh, I'm in a different place in the world than I was <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, and that that happens to all of us. I think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that sort of thing is what really helps me feel like a real adult because I'm like I'm a real adult. I have a baby nephew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna hold him and babysit him and yes. yeah, do all those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we have been going at this for a fairly yeah. long time, though it does not feel like it as usual. Uh-huh. Yeah, this flew by. Uh-huh. But I know there's one more question on my list that I'm really curious. What's next for you, Magnus, ladies? Is there is life just sort of cruising along for? now or do you have plans for big cool projects happening in the future presumably you won't always be a student caitlin although i know some people have made a very fulfilling life out of that some people (laughs) some people have chosen that path Um, (laughs) but i will be graduating in the fall hey congratulations thank you yes so yeah if you hear of any cool library jobs you know just send them Mm -hmm. caitlin's way Uh Yeah, I'm just going to cruise along as I'm doing, I think, for the foreseeable future. You know, I'm really enjoying being a grandma Mm -hmm. and, you know, enjoying the job that I have to do and enjoying having Caitlin around the house for a little bit longer. (laughs) And she's on notice. I mean, she doesn't have just because she gets a job. Uh I mean, schmob, schmob, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Have to. She could just get a job right here yeah. in St. Louis and she can just, you know, keep on living at home as long as she wants. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't know. No, no, no obvious big, big changes coming. But you know how life is. You know, yep. you just mm-hmm. never know. You're don't like you're just kind of going along. And then the managing editor of Lutheran Witness says, by the way, <laughs> I'm going to move. <laughs> <laughs> And then, by the way, I'm going to move again and again uh-huh. and again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think that through. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a beautiful life. <laughs> but I still and always will cherish the time when I got to see your lovely face every day, Cheryl. Oh, it was wonderful. It was great. <laughs> it was wonderful. Aww. Yeah. Caitlin and Cheryl, and it's been super fun having you in studio for our first inaugural episode yes. of. It is everything I wanted it to be. Yes. <laughs> Mother Lovely. daughters. Mother daughters. Conversations. Yes. So thank you for spending an hour with us today. It's been fun. You're welcome. We My pleasure. So, yeah, we were so honored to be invited. We, we had a great time. Yay! Yay! Ladies in the lounge, we want to know about your experiences as a mom or a daughter or both. Yes, you can be both. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Sorry, just think about that. <laughs> Little known fact. <laughs> At the same time, even. At the same time. Yes, we want to know about your experiences. Share your stories with us in the comments in our Facebook group, the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can also do that on our Instagram page at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Comment on this episode or the rest of the posts we'll make this week about being a mother and a daughter. You can do that right there at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can sign up for our e-newsletter in the show notes for this episode, or you can send us an email, lutheranladies at kfuo.org. You can find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app or on the KFUO radio app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. And I'm Rachel. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a review for us, too. If you love the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast, consider financially supporting our producer, KFUO Radio, so we can keep doing what we do. Find out how at kfuo.org give.